when a battery is connected to a capacitor, then we say the capacitor stores energy. Now, some people will say the capacitor stores charge. And I don't have too big of a problem with that, but I think what is meant by Q, the amount of charge stored in the capacitor, is the amount of positive charge on the positive plate. It's the magnitude of the charge on either of the two plates. So picture it like this. The positive terminal of the battery connects to one of the plates of a parallel plate capacitor and connects to the other plate. Well, that causes electrons to be pulled off of the top plate, conducted through the external circuit, and ultimately deposited or conducted onto the bottom plate, meaning the bottom plate is now negatively charged, and the top plate, because it's lacking in electrons, of course, is positively charged. But the total charge is equal to zero. There's just as much positive Q on the upper plate as there is negative Q on the bottom plate. Probably a good idea to choose a reference system where the low potential of the battery, or in other words the negative terminal, has a potential equal to zero. If that's the case then we can diagram this schematically. We say if it's just a one and a half volt battery we might draw a symbol like that. Uh, in this case that's what I have pictured here is a one and a half volt battery. Um, if it was a six volt battery, then we might draw it like this. It's like it has four individual cells. Okay. Anyway, there's the symbol for a battery. I guess this would be, well, I'll ask you, what's the voltage of that battery? Yeah, two cells, and each cell is one and a half volts, so I guess that would be a three volt battery. It's kind of arbitrary how many of those lines you draw. You don't need to pay close attention to that. So if I want to draw a schematic diagram for just a single battery and a single capacitor, it would look like this. The voltage is from the battery, the capacitance, and then since we've set low potential at the negative terminal, we can even draw in this symbol, which represents ground. I guess we could throw a switch on it. and say the capacitor's uncharged until we drop the switch and complete the circuit. Okay. What if we want to take three capacitors and connect them all together in parallel? Well, parallel means every uh, element in the circuit all has the same potential difference. So we have a potential difference across this battery of one and a half volts. So if I connect the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the capacitor, that capacitor has yeah, one and a half volts. It gets the full potential difference of the battery. Now I can create a junction in the wire. And then you can see that the second capacitor is also receiving the full potential difference of the battery. I can create another junction, or I can lead it off of the same junction. I can create a new junction, or I could lead to the same junction, or I could just make a wire that goes all the way to the positive terminal. Not going to really make a difference. All we're showing here is that every one of these capacitors, numbered one, two, and three, all have the full potential difference. If we draw the symbol and say this wire goes off to ground, then let's see what's the electric potential of this point right here. Well, if this is if this wire is a perfect conductor, then this wire takes me on a path to the ground. So the electric potential here is zero volts. How about this capacitor? It's all perfect conductor. It has a path to the ground, zero volts. And we can make the same argument for the other one. So all three negative terminals of these capacitors are all at an electric potential of zero volts. What's the potential here? Well, 
the electric potential of the positive terminal of the battery is 1.5 volts, and here's a path through a pure conductor to this location with a potential of 1.5 volts. So the potential difference across this capacitor is 1.5 minus 0, yeah, 1.5 volts. And the other capacitor, it's all a perfect conductor, goes to a junction in a perfect conductor, right. So every one of these capacitors is going to have a potential of 1.5 volts at the positive terminal and a potential of 0 volts at the negative terminal once, once electrostatic equilibrium is achieved. And in a circuit like this, electrostatic equilibrium is almost instantly achieved because there's very little resistance in the wires. So we can imagine taking the positive terminal and just really all we've done is we've linked together the positive terminal to three separate plates of a parallel plate capacitor and likewise the same thing with the negative terminals. So what's the schematic diagram for this one? There's our battery. There's capacitors one, two, and three and in our schematic diagram We also have capacitors 1, 2, and 3. If we imagine this as ground, the electric potential right here is 0 volts. The electric potential right here, you guessed it, 0 volts. Right here, 0 volts. Here, 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 here. All those points indicate it would be 0 volts because they're all a direct path to ground. What's the electric potential right here? Well, if I'm represent, if this is supposed to represent a one and a half volt battery, then the electric potential here is also one and a half volts. Right here, direct path, one and a half volts. Here, 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 here. You guessed it. Basically, what we have all traced here in red, that all represents a high electric potential of one and a half volts. And every point traced here in blue represents a low electric potential of zero volt. This is our definition of a parallel connection. Any number of elements connected in an electric circuit that are all connected in parallel all receive the exact same voltage. It doesn't matter whether these are capacitors, resistors, or any element of a circuit. If one circuit element is connected with another, it's guaranteed to have the same voltage as one another. So, you can see the capacitance is probably going up in this case. Every one of these has the same distance between the plates, and they all have some given area. Now, there's no guarantee that these areas are the same. I know I've copied and pasted the picture so it looks like all three of our capacitors, one, two, and three, are identical, but that's not necessarily the case. The first one might have the greatest area of all, and the second one a different area, and so on, but effectively what we've done by putting them together like this, if I take this one and I slide it over and touch it here, all I've done is just made it like it's one capacitor with greater area. Does that make sense? I could take this capacitor and slide it over too. Okay, so by putting capacitors together in parallel, you've effectively made the area go up. And for parallel plate capacitors, capacitance is equal to epsilon naught times A over D. So as area goes up, capacitance should go up. And the question we ought to ask goes something like this. Could I take a single capacitor connected to the same battery and expect this to store the same magnitude of charge on either of the plates as well as the same amount of potential energy as this combination of three capacitors. If we could find that, we would describe this as CEQ, the equivalent capacitance of the entire circuit. Well, this equation we have relating capacitance, charge, and voltage, that Q equals CV, or C is Q over V, or V is Q over C. That equation works no matter how we want to apply it. In other words, the charge on capacitor number one is equal to the capacitance of capacitor number one, 
times the voltage or potential difference across capacitor number one. Or the voltage across capacitor number two is equal to the charge that develops on capacitor number two divided by the capacitance of number two. Or the capacitance equivalent is equal to the total charge stored divided by the total voltage applied across the whole circuit. In other words, you can apply the equation for capacitance individually to any single capacitor, or you could apply it to the overall equivalent. Right? We think of the battery as our total voltage. We have an equivalent capacitance, and then whatever charge would be stored on this one equivalent capacitor would be described as our total charge. So let's see. How about figuring out the amount of charge on capacitor number one. So Q1 is equal to C1 times V1. Likewise, Q2, the charge on the second capacitor, would be equal to C2 times V2. And the charge on the third capacitor would be C3 times V3. However, by definition of parallel connection, V1 equals V2 equals V3. The potential difference from point A to point B is the same as the potential difference from point C to point D, and so on. So we really don't need these subscripts. So we can say Q1 equals C1 times V, Q2 equals C2 times V, and Q3 equals C3 times V. So like I say, whatever amount of positive charge is on the positive plate of capacitor 1, and whatever amount of charge develops on the positive plate of capacitor number 2, even if these areas don't differ. So just think of that there's some amount of positive Q1. There's a different amount of charge that's stored across the area of capacitor number 2. That's positive Q number 2. And there's going to be a positive Q number 3. But if I were to take all three of these capacitors and slide them together so they're touching, and effectively, that's what the parallel combination does, these wires make it as if they're all slid together and just have their areas touching one another, then the total amount of charge across this one large plate would be nothing more then charge 1 plus charge 2 plus charge number 3. Or in other words, our total amount of charge would be C1 times V plus C2 times V plus C3 times V. And we can factor out the V since it's all the same. But we also know, since we can apply the relationship between charge, capacitance, and voltage, either individually or in total, the total charge must be equal to the equivalent capacitance times the total voltage. Well, that's what this V is. It's the total voltage. It's the battery voltage. So it seems that when we put capacitors together in series, it's very easy to figure out what the equivalent capacitance is. It's just equal to the sum of all the individual capacitors. And in that way, we can say that the equivalent capacitance will always be greater than the single largest capacitor in that network. So those are the basics about capacitors connected in parallel.